Hello, everybody. This is from Market Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodman. And over there, we have John Lewandowski. Hey. How you doing, John? Pretty good. Much better than yesterday, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yesterday was kind of killing for us. We, I, we both would like to apologize. We've had a really yeah. rough weekend. Most definitely. Um, so, um, with that being said, we're actually going to, we came into this show high energy. So, you yep. know, um, our show, speaking of high energy, is brought to you by Hockey Locker, 202 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. They will take care of you for all your hockey needs, fan gear, player gear, figure skin gear, needs to skate sharpen, they got you. Matter of fact, if you need a place to skate, just go across the street. Wilson Park's right there. All righty. Um, with that being said, uh, check out my earlier Florida Everblades versus Jacksonville Iceman video. Trust me, it's a doozy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Today, the Nashville Predators took on the Minnesota, I mean, Dallas North. <laughs> Uh -huh. the, the Dallas Stars. Um, they, if you see, I was. I still think that Dallas should have. Uh, the Minnesota North Stars should have never moved, especially since they put a team back there ten years later. <laughs> to the day. So, with that being said, shots on goal were twenty six twenty in favor of the Stars. There was no in favor of in the faceoff circle. 50 -50. No, it was dead even. Uh, Dallas was 0 for 3 on the power play. If anybody remembers early in the season, in the first game the Preds played the Stars, Dallas torched our goalie for five power play goals in the first game. So for that turnaround, you're seeing what you're getting. Yep. Took a little while, but you're seeing what you're getting. Um, Nashville went 0 for 1, but I mean, really, it was a really physical game, so let's get into yeah. that. Um, penalty minutes were 11 for Nashville, 7 for Dallas. Um, I believe we did have a five-minute fighting major for the arvidsson andrew Cogliato <clears throat> fight. Now, yes, folks, you heard that right. Victor Arvidsson versus Andrew Cogliato. That is not uh, – these two are not fighters at no, all. Not at all. All right. But that's about all you got for penalties. In the first, however, you've got scoring one – oh, wait. I got to get into the hits. Ha, ha. Hits. There were 55 of them. Yeah, very Total. physical game played by the Predators tonight. 55 in total, 33 of them went to Nashville, 22 for the Stars. Um, block shots were 10 to 7 Stars, and giveaways were 8 in favor of the Stars to Nashville's 10, but, you know, they played very physical and defensively sound. So if you do turn the puck over and you play that way, you're going to be okay. Yeah. You don't want to go any higher than 10. Nope. But Not like, preferably. <laughs> no. All right. Scoring in the first was Rope Hintz with his 13th really good hockey player. Kind of reminds me of um, like a young Rocco, younger Grocco Grimaldi with the speed and the skating ability and the puck, the stick handling. But yeah, he's younger, so we'll see what happens. Uh, and the assist went to John Klingberg, his 20th. Uh, then scoring, even though last night's got waved off, Ryan Ellis got one with his third of the year with an assist from Coonan. Coonan back on the board again with another point. Uh, that's his eighth. Uh, then score, uh, sorry, folks. Scoring in the second was Yakov Trent in his fourth with an assist to Colton Sissons. And if you want to add a third one to that one, Go ahead and uh, assist Tanner Janot for the hit that freed up the puck on that one. Yeah. Um, Tanner Janot, um, I can, well, I'll get into it in a second because he had a heck of a game. Um, 
And then, well, a guy that I'm going to be talking about with Ted Ergino, you know, Jamie Oleksiak scored his fourth with an assist to Rope Hens, his 19th. So, um, like I said, before I get into any more of this, no scoring in the third. We went to OT. No scoring in OT. I will get into this, the game stuff now before I get into a shootout. Um, Tanner Janot had a hit against Jamie Oleksiak. Jamie Oleksiak, 6'7", 210 pounds. That is a big dude. Yeah, it is. And he knocked him on his butt. Yep. And then later on in the game, I don't think John Klingberg learned from Jamie Oleksiak watching what he did because he went to do the same thing Oleksiak did and got knocked on his keister too. Yep. So um, if you want to talk about it, I, there is a stat that I particularly want to look at for the for the Predators. Let's just look at this. Luke cutted three hits. Yakov treaded six hits. Colton Sissons, uh, Cal Yarncroc, uh, Nick Cousins, all had two hits. Uh, Harper Ellis, Johansson had three. Tanner Janot had four. Uh, Granlin had one. Ahala had one. Grimaldi had one. Uh, Benning had one. Echo had one. Davies had one. Only player without only players without a hit was Ben Harper. Uh, Victor Arvidsson, Reb Pitlick. But Pitlick only saw seven minutes of ice time. Yeah. Today. He was not on the ice much. But I did <coughs> want to say this. There are some guys who seem to be getting caught out there for a bit, so that may have cut into his ice time. Yeah. Um, That's kind of like Jamie Davies only seeing 12 minutes where everybody else is almost in the 20s of time on ice. Um, also that with all the penalties and power plays and stuff, uh, that'll limit your ice time as well. Yeah. Well, um, in that was Anton Hudobin. Hey buddy, how you doing? Just so y'all know, I, I am friends with him. I do talk to him. He's a cool dude. He may not play for, he may play for a team I don't like, but I've been friends with him before he was even a Dallas star. So yeah. Um, he stopped 18 to 20 with a, uh, 0. 0.900 save percentage. Not a bad night. Not a great night. If one more would have went by him, that that percentage would have dropped under eight. Under eight is bad. Above yeah. uh, anything above nine is good. Speaking above nine, you see Saros, the man who lives above nine. <laughs> um, he stopped 24 of 26. One of one on the power play. 23 of 25 equal strength. No shorthanded shots against him. Good job um, as far as our power play, keeping him yeah. from getting any shorthanded chances. Um, his save percentage was 0. Point, or, uh, 0. 0.93, or, uh, 0.923, sorry. Dyslexia at the moment for some reason. Um, he played well, um, but let's get into the shootout. Shootout was, shooting first was Ryan Johansson. <laughs> He's magic in the shootout. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, then we got Jason Robertson, no goal. Roman Yossi, no goal. He missed the net entirely. Um, Joe Pavelski, no goal. Cal Yonkrock, no goal. Rupa Hintz, no goal. Preds win. Yep. Uh, and with that being said, uh, your referees tonight were Daniel Rourke and Brian Pochmara. They didn't really get under my skin too much tonight. <laughs> Uh, your linesmen were Andrew Smith and Brian Ponchich. Head coach for Dallas is Rick Bonus. They, Dallas needs to get their bonus back from him. Um, that <laughs> Phil's head coach is John Hines. He put the extra mustard on tonight. Uh, let me tell you, to know in that lineup, definitely, I don't think he's coming out when McCarron comes back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we got a uh, score. Uh, scratches tonight for Dallas with Mark Pissick. Scratches tonight for Nashville with Ellie Tolvin and uh, Michael McCarron and Dante Pepro. Uh, today, Nashville Predators did sign Josh Healy to a one year contract, as well as um, putting 
Matthew Olivier on the IR. I believe that was to open up the roster spot for Jano at the current moment, I believe. Okay. Um, anytime you put a guy on IR, they come off your roster and your payroll. They do get paid, but I believe it's half salary. Um, while they're on IR, they get paid half salary. Every time they play, they get paid half salary. So um, I'm just going to look at Nashville stats real quick as far as the last 10 – as far as uh, right now. Um, Nashville um, is sitting at 23-19. And one with 47 points with a win per, with a percentage uh, point percentage of 0. 0.547. Um, behind them is Chicago. They are back by four. Uh, Dallas is back by six, and Columbus is back by nine. Um, Columbus is practically out at this point. Um, Dallas is getting there. Um, they can win at home, but they cannot win on the road. Um, looking at Nashville's home record, they are 12, 9, and 0. Uh, on the road, they are 11, 10, and 1. But also think of this, they went on an eight-game road trip and still came out on top, which, uh, believe it or not, when they started their season, they were on the road a lot and they were not winning much. So, um, and shoot. I believe that in shootouts, the National Predators are five and oh. Yep. Which, believe it or not, is the best record in the NHL in shootouts. Nice. The only team that comes close is the Pittsburgh Penguins. They are three and oh. Okay. Um, the National Predators in their last 10 are eight and two. Uh, much better uh, towards the back end of the season. I've always said this about the Preds. They are a team that starts a little sluggish. And right around the holidays, they just go full bore into you. And they become a very tough team to play. They take a little while to gel. Yeah. Um, and that does happen with teams. It does. But, th- but those are also the teams that are deadly in the playoffs. Yes. Because... Then you got all these teams who won all regular season. They put everything they had into it. Come playoffs, they're gassed. Right. Nashville's just kind of – now they're just trying to – if you actually look at tonight's game, like I said, with the 33 hits and everything, they are trying to wear down this division. Right. And, and if that's the way you want to do it, that is definitely the way to do it. I'm sorry. I got to take that off. I can barely see. Um, You could definitely look at the Broad Street bullies and understand that they were so physical that they would literally wear a team out. And in the third, they could just pounce all over you. No matter how many goals you were up by, there was always a chance to come back because they wore you out. Right. And they had all that in reserve. So with that being said, um, it is uh, 10.30, almost central time. Um, The uh, trade deadline ends when? Three Uh, or four o'clock tomorrow, I believe. One moment. Let me uh, go to my... uh, All right. Uh, cap friendly here. Oh, we've got Penguins trade for Jeff Carter from the Kings. That is a deal that just uh, happened. And uh, David Riddich just got traded to the Maple Leafs from the Flames. Uh, former roommate of Merrick Masnick uh, back in the uh, when they were playing in the Czech League. Interesting little side note there. Uh, Dan yeah. Masnick is a former. Uh, we have 15 hours. So 15 hours, 37 minutes, 12 seconds. That'll keep ticking down. But um, 
Uh, with that being said, uh, you know, Ryan Geslav was just activated from IR. I would not be surprised to see him move. That would be an interesting move for the Preds as well. A big physical center to put in front of the net, something that they're heavily lacking. Yeah. Um, Nashville picked up, jo- like I said, Josh Healy. If you want to know about Josh Healy, Josh Healy is a big bruising style defenseman. Kind of reminds me of Chara, but a compact version. He's like a okay. Rocco Grimaldi eats meets Chara. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the way that he plays, and he, he has zero forgiveness. He kind of reminds me of Dion Phaneuf. Hopefully he doesn't like hitting his own teammates, but let's not get into that. <laughs> um, with that being said, also signed to a contract today by the uh, New York Islanders is former Florida Everblades goalie and Admiral's AHL contract, Ken Appleby. Um, so another Admiral's uh, alum from last season may get his NHL shot with the Islanders. Oh, um, nice. So, I mean, it, uh, also, uh, I don't know if I uh, mentioned this, but uh Congrats to Mark Delgazio of UMass. Uh, he is a, uh, a, they won the uh, NCAA tournament yesterday. And Mark Delgazio is a fourth round pick by the Nashville Predators in 2019. Um, and he went to UMass. So congrats to him on, yeah, uh, congratulations. His, college, on his college success. Um, with that also being said, please sign soon. We need defensemen. <laughs> <laughs> I kid, I kid, I kid. Get your education. It's more important than playing the pro game, even though the pro game is a lot of fun. Trust me when I say that. Kind of speaking from experience. <laughs> mm-hmm. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of whatever the two hours we got left of our weekend. And uh, the next 15 hours of insanity (laughs) because every time my phone goes off, I'm going to probably have a heart attack. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So um, if anything breaks, we will try to be here. If we're, you know, incapacitated by our eyes being closed, we will (laughs) get to it early in uh, around, uh, around lunchtime tomorrow for everybody. So, um, from that point, uh, probably in the afternoon, I may may try to go live a little bit, see how everybody's doing around three, see what everybody's thoughts on the trade deadline were as soon as they were over. Um, I might, John might, I might invite you over, I might not, maybe no, maybe it's mm-hmm. up to us. We'll talk about it after our show, yeah. but I'll chat with you guys later. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Please don't forget to subscribe. Click that bell to get notified every time we upload a video on YouTube. Please go over to our Facebook page, hit like and follow. I give up uh, de- up-to-date content. By the way, I just uploaded a video literally while we were doing a show of Tanner Janot knocking John Klingberg on his keister. Have mm-hmm. fun, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>